What's up, what's up? I'm here. I got my, I had to get my phone so I can see what in the world is going on in the chat. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome. I had another jacket to change into, and I could feel like Mr. Rogers, you know, won't you be my neighbor? <clears throat> All right. Arizona Longtails, what's up? Nate is here. Hey, Nate. John's here. What's up, John? Is it like snowing up there where you are yet? Technical difficulties, he's getting drunk a case of hater aid and got stuck in the unicorn. No, I actually haven't pulled the unicorn out since I got back from uh, from Tennessee, so I do need to go pull it out and dust it off. Not yet forecasted for Thursday. Holy crap. It got down to 39 here the other morning, and I thought I was going to die when I walked outside. I was like, this is way too freaking cold. Way too freaking cold. Oh, you coming back to? Are you coming back to Florida, John? In uh, in three weeks. It got me a fat dip in a beer, and I'm ready to go. What's up, Lawton? Still hot in Southeast Texas would love snow. Y'all are crazy. I don't like, I don't know what is wrong with my body. So like I was born in Louisiana. I pretty much raised most of my life here in Georgia. But I, I guess I still have that like swamp alligator blood because unless it is 95 degrees and 100% humidity outside, I am not comfortable. As soon as it hits 70, I'm in a hoodie. When it hits 60, I'm in coveralls. When it hits 50, I don't go outside no more. I just, I don't know what it is. Like, I just cannot stand the cold. Like, I absolutely hate it. AZ Longtail. I didn't know you were in Georgia last week. You should have called me. <laughs> Wait till December when I get you out on the lake. Yeah, I'm going free. Actually, I text Troy today. We we're talking about going fishing in December. And I was like, that's fine. But my man John may get frostbite, so you're gonna have to like kind of snuggle up to me on the boat, and I'm gonna have to bring like a couple of sleeping bags to to keep me warm. Cool, JDS is going to Florida. Sweet, now I got a place to go down there in the winter time, and I can test boats and not freeze my butt off. Kevin, 77 here, and had a jacket on. Yeah, I, I would too. Like it's it's probably in the 60s right now, and I had to wear a jacket when I go outside. It's too cold for me. All right, so uh, no spare room, but I also have a king bed. So, hey, I'll snuggle up with you. I'll snuggle with Anthony up in Tennessee. So he said it wasn't that bad. <laughs> but uh, so just a little update on the channel. So I've got five videos completely filmed for the 16-foot boat, the Bottomland Bato. I just got to get time to edit them. I'm working on one now, and it's the interior video. So, like, the interior is done. Um, the only thing I've got left to do is just like some little stuff and um, then I'll pretty much be wrapped up with a 16 foot boat and then we can start working on motors. So I've got my original, well, hold on, let me back up before I say that. So this past weekend, now that I've got the boat fully decked out, I've got everything in it that I'm going to have pretty much. I went ahead and did a, a test video kind of like I did with a 10 foot boat where I put the 212 Predator motor on it. I put the 420 and then I ran the big 670 and I wanted to try them all out and see what kind of speeds I get because I had originally tested all of those motors before I did anything to the boat. So when it was bare bones, nothing in it, I had taken the seats out and I brazed all the holes back so that we could get it out on the water. So I went and tested it, I think it was like last year before I even started building the boat. So I've got all those speeds recorded and now I've done the new one. So that video will come out after I get done. 
but I told you that story to tell you this story. So my original idea that like I was all super excited about because I'm doing this motor build that nobody's ever done before. And it's a little bit insane. Um, but I've been I've been waiting to tell you guys about it because I don't want to just throw it out there and then somebody else copy my idea before I even get a chance to do it. So I'm going to do it uh, still. But now that I've seen after the boat is finished and how much it weighs and how heavy this boat is, I don't think it's going to be the final motor for this boat. So I'm still going to do it. So the mystery motor, <clears throat> excuse me, the mystery motor is, is still coming. Like I'm still going to do that. I'm going to do it soon. Um, I'm hoping by the end of November, at least I'll have it out on the water once and try it. I'm going to do some mods to it after I try it in, in the basic form. And then after that, I'll do a little hop up to it, see how it goes. And then we're going to take that motor off. And then I think we're going to wind up putting the Harley motor on the 16 foot boat. Um, I'm doing the Harley motor regardless. Like even, even if the other motor works out great for the 16 foot boat, I'm still going to do the Harley motor just because I've always wanted to do that. And I think it will be really cool. And uh, nobody's ever documented like how to do it. So that's my big thing is I want to do it and document it. So I have a video series on if you decide to do something stupid like me and put a Harley motor on your boat, this is how you do it or I completely screw it up and I go, this is how not to do it. Uh, so that's, that's all in the works. But once I get the Harley motor done, I'm going to take it and put it on pocket rocket, the little 10 foot boat. I'm going to take it out to the lake and see if it will even float. I highly doubt it's going to. So the motor that we run last couple videos, the 670 predator weighs like, uh, like 250, 275 ish with the whole kit and everything. So, and, and, it, and it barely floats. Like it's, it's drafting. Well, I say drafting. It's only got about this much of the boat sticking out of the water. So basically where that big hunt deck is, I've got on the back, that is basically the water level. So I've only got like four or five inches to go before the whole back end is completely sunk down. So what I'm going to try to do is put the Harley motor on the 10 foot boat, take it out and just see if it'll float. If it floats, I will attempt to run it but I highly doubt that's going to be, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to float. I think it's either going to go all the way down or it, it's just not even going to be worth trying. So we'll see. I am going to try it. And then I've already got a new idea for Pocket Rocket. So Pocket Rocket is getting a whole different motor than I originally thought, but it's also going to be something that no one's ever done before. So I'm excited about it. I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. And it takes a lot to get me nervous about it, but I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit nervous. I had an idea and I was like, Oh man, that's a great idea. And then I started thinking about it and I was like, I need to buy a helmet. So yeah, I'm going to definitely going <laughs> to definitely going to be getting a helmet for that one. But so that's those two projects. And then grave digger still happening. I just, I have not had time to work on it. It'll be probably December, but I, I do plan on getting it up and rolling and uh, hopefully we'll see what happens with that. I, I still don't even know what in the hell I'm going to do. I know I'm going to make the hull out of foam and then cover it with not fiberglass. I'm going to do a mastic coating on the outside and then paint it and then we'll put the casket on it and see, see what it does. But I'm hoping that we hit 25,000 subscribers before I finish that boat because I really want to blow that thing up with Tannerite. Like I think that's going to be super awesome so that's what i'm kind of planning there um let's see here i got a little behind on the chat kevin topic is anything tonight um i'm open to questions if anybody has any any questions they want to ask me um I'm gonna try to give you guys as much information as i can on what's going on with with all the boats um et bass an update on pocket rocket so uh Right now, Pocket Rocket is kind of not on the back burner, but I've got to get my welding rig set up. Um, I went a couple weeks ago to local welding supply shop and tried to get an argon tank because I, I got a brand spanking new aluminum spool gun welder and I've been like dying to use it. But every time I think about going and buying a tank of argon, I'm either busy or something happens or just, uh, just a lot of stuff's been going on. So I finally got a chance to go over there a couple weeks ago and go get one. And come to find out there's a national shortage of argon tanks, so they can't get the tanks in. So I talked to the owner. He's going to try to get me a tank. And I was supposed to go back over there this past week, but I got busy with work and I didn't get a chance to. So I'm hoping to have that in the next week or two. 
And once I get that, I'm going to take pocket rocket and I'm going to extend the float pods, not all the way to the front, but up to the point to where the boat kind of rides in the water. So I went back and watched the, the video footage from the last time we took it out. And like when the boat's just sitting in the water, you know, a little bit more than half of it is actually touching the water. The whole front half never even gets close to touching the water, but just because it's so back heavy. So I'm going to extend the pods up just a little bit more than the halfway point, and I'm going to back cut them at an angle. I went back and read all the comments on that last video when I asked everybody what they wanted to see, and it was a overwhelming majority wanted to see me extend the pods all the way to the front. So I'm going to try that first. Uh, hopefully that works out. Don't know if it's going to work out or not. I hope it does because it will help keep the stability on that boat. That's my biggest problem with that boat is it's just so skinny. When you get in it, even sitting down, it just feels like you're going to tip over if, if you move the slightest bit. And like I like to stand up when I run the mud motors, and I mean I can sit down. It's like it's not a it's not a huge issue. I can do it, but I just don't feel comfortable. I feel more in control, and I can move my balance around a little bit more and shift my weight when I'm standing up. So I, I want to keep it wide if I can to help with that stability. And once I get this thing running as fast as it's going to run, which is going to be a lot more than I originally anticipated, I, I want to feel like I have at least a little bit of stability out there on the on the water because it's a, it's a sketchy boat. Like that boat is stupid, stupid sketchy. I would never want to fish out of that boat ever, even with the side pods on it. it it's still like... It's just real sketchy feeling, but so that's what's going on with that. I will be back working on it probably, I'd say in the next month or so, but right now it's not my main priority. My main priority is getting videos out for the 16 foot boat because it's done. Like it's, it's ready to move on to the next phase, which is going to be motor. So I need to get that done. 90 degrees here today in Yuma, Arizona. This is my jealous face. I don't think we've gotten over like 70 in the last two or three weeks like our free trial of summer is officially over and it sucks got any pros and cons for mud skipper or or and gator tails all right so you're talking about two totally different areas of the mud motor world so uh mud skipper hell any of the mud motor kits are good they're all so similar that it, it's really nitpicky when you get down to it if you want the cheapest, either Swamp Runner or Mud Skipper, I think the Mud Skipper, if you don't get the, the bent handle like I did, it's a little bit cheaper. Um, and it's not a bad kit. It's pretty much, I don't know who copied who, but the Mud Skipper and the, the, the Swamp Runner right now are basically Chinese copies of each other or Thailand copies of each other. They're exactly the same. They're, the differences in them, like when I did the Mud Motor review video, were so minuscule. It doesn't make any sense to pick one over the other. Just go with whichever one is cheaper at the time. Um, if you want, in my opinion, the best for the cheap long tails, I like the Beaver Dam. Um, and there was only a few things on it that were more beefier, in my opinion, than the Mudskipper and the Swamp Runner. But you can't go wrong with any of them. If you just need a mud motor to get to where you want to hunt and fish and you want to do it cheap, that's the way to go. Gator Tails... That's money right there, bud. If you got that kind of money, go for it. Um, I am not an expert by any means in short tails or what they call surface drive mud motors. I do like them. I want one and I plan on building one at some point. But my biggest factor keeping me away from them and buying a commercially available one like a Gator Tail or one of the Mud Buddies or the, uh, what's the other big one? The GTR, the, um, I'm missing one. There's another really big one, Pro Drive is the cost i can build like five six seven sometimes eight long tails for what i can buy one of those short drives or one of those short tails and what kills me about it is you go on this the, the most basic thing like you go on the facebook group you go on a long tail facebook group and you go on a, a real mud what they call a real mud motor the short tail groups and you look at the topics that are being discussed over on the long tail group it's what size should I get for this boat? Or what prop should I use? Or my props popping out of the water, how do I do it? You go over to the short tail side and it is just thread after thread after thread of people with problems and questions and dumping money out over, like end over end into these short tails. The props are expensive. 
The motors are bigger. A lot of them are running EFI now. A lot of people have problems with them. They've got clutches. They've got a lot of bearings that go bad. Um, some of them have lower units that have to have, you know, some type of oil or grease or something in them. And it's like nonstop, always something wrong with them. On the long tail side, it's like, hey, you know, my, my carburetor's not working. We'll clean the damn thing out, throw some carburetor cleaner on and get back down the road. It's a freaking lawnmower engine. And not to say that the short tails aren't lawn or aren't lawnmower engines either, but they're getting bigger and more advanced. And there's so many more moving parts and more, you know, precision parts on a short tail versus a long tail. Um, you'll be happy with either one, but I will tell you this. Every video I have ever seen on YouTube and on Facebook of a short tail getting stuck, it got pulled out by an American style long tail. I've seen one video where somebody with a Thailand style long tail pulled somebody out. And I don't think that's anything other than just showing off like the American style long tail dudes are, they're just, they're into what they're into. And they're very proud of, of what they got. Like backwater people, like once you buy a backwater, like you are in the backwater fan club forever. And there is nothing wrong with that. That is a great mud butter. I would love to have one. And if one of you guys wants to buy me one, I, I wear a size 40 EFI. That's the, the one that I would like to have, but I can't afford it. They're expensive. They are really expensive. And as many boat projects as I've got going on, I just, I don't, I don't even want to mess with them. I do want to build one though, eventually, but that's kind of my take on the two. If you want something just to get somewhere, go buy whatever you want on the long tail side. If you want a short tail, I don't really know. They're, they're all seem to be good, but they all seem to have a lot of maintenance issues and parts break. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about the, the, the current market for the short tails, but I mean, if somebody wants to donate one of each to the channel or get all those companies to send me one, I will gladly review the hell out of them. Yeah. So it looks like AZ long tails kind of helped answer your question too. Um, and they, they pretty much look at it the same way as me. It's, it's, it's a money thing. It, it's definitely a money thing. Would love to see you build up a Vanguard 35 or a 37 horsepower long tail build. I'm going to at some point. Um, right now, I just like, my thing is I don't make enough money from YouTube to build a two or $3,000 engine from, you know, on that side. What I'm looking for right now is well, I can't even say, I can't, if I can't say it without just giving it away, so I'm not going to say it, but I'm trying to go for more budget friendly stuff and stuff that I can find locally. That's not in the lawnmower world. I'm trying to get out of lawnmower engines and go to something different. We'll, we'll get to that when we get to the channel, but I, I would love to have uh, one of the 37 EFIs or the 40 EFIs. I hear there's a 50 coming out. Um, my hope and dream is that by the time that 50 horsepower comes out, the channel will be big enough and I will be somewhat recognized as a, you know, somebody who does product reviews and they will send me one for review. And I would love to do that because I would love to have one. Um, but my other thing with the, with the 37, the 35 Kohler and like the 40 is hopping them up gets really expensive, really fast. Like that 670 Predator motor I got, I got it on like scratch and dent sale for like, I think it was 700 bucks or something. And I didn't spend but about 400 on it. And it's running from what they told me and what all the, you know, sick performance 670 is saying somewhere in like the 30 to 32 horsepower range. And so I got what, 11, 1200 bucks in that motor. I mean, you can't find just the motor, a 37 Kohler, or, or even one of the Briggs or a 40 horsepower for less than, I think the last time I checked, they were at least two or three grand. That's just for the motor. And then you start hopping it up, the hop-up kits get expensive really, really fast. But I don't know, maybe the channel will take off and I will have a bigger budget to go do stuff like that. If, if that ever happens, that's my plan is to do this full time and have that budget you know, from YouTube revenue coming in so that I can do the crazier builds that, that people wanna see. Started watching your channel and other tiny boat nation channels. Can I run a crazy idea by your? Yes, you can, Kevin. Drop it down in the comment section. I want to hear it. Uh, I want to try out a 301 
one of our 10 foot but yeah I, there's been a lot of talk about the 301 that like eight horsepower motor that's between the 212 and the 420 um it's lighter than the 420 it's not much more you know heavier than the than the 212 but it's apparently get a, a lot more power out of it and i my big thing is like i need to research it and figure out what performance parts fits it i know some of the 420 parts fit it and some of the 212 parts fit it. I just got to find out what is what because I never leave anything stock. I always want to modify it. So, like, I kind of want to know that ahead of time. And there's just not a ton of information about it out there yet that I've been able to find. But that is, I do want to visit that at some point, the 301. Locate. Oh, I'm in, uh, I'm in Covington, Georgia. So, I'm, like, southeast of Atlanta. You were moose hunting last week, and it was 28 to 32 degrees. You are insane. Um, you should definitely go get your brain checked. I do not want to be outside when it's 28 degrees. Rumor is CKS and SPS is made in the same place in Thailand. <laughs> yeah. I actually got a, a comment that's going in the haters corner. I think it's the, on the next video. Some Yahoo got on there and like went on this big, long, like I see black helicopters at night rant about CKS and, and Mudskipper and Swamp Runner. And I was like, oh my God, like what in the hell is wrong with this dude? I wonder if any of what was said was like, I can't wait to do the scooter's corner on that one. Like it's going to be pretty funny. I built a 14 foot tracker with a backwater and a 420 Predator grab bar and tricked out Max. Set in my backyard for four years, never been in the water. Never gave it any love. I work too much. Oh, that poor Blackwater. How dare you? You need to go give that motor to somebody who actually wants it. God, I can't believe you. I'd love to have Blackwater. They're good mud motors. Everybody I've ever talked to that bought one, like, absolutely fell in love with it. So. So reverse engineer my surface drive. I'm actually talking to a guy on Instagram who's been helping me out a lot. Um, one of the one of the followers from YouTube hit me up on Instagram. We've been kind of talking back and forth, but he built his own surface drive, and uh, he sent me a bunch of pictures. And we've been talking back and forth about how to do it. So when I decide to do it, um, of course, my motor is not going to be a lawnmower motor. It's going to be something else. But um, I think I've got a kind of generalized idea of how I want to do it now and how everything needs to go together. So I think it'll be. I think it'll work out good. I can't wait to try it. I just I think it's just gonna be fun to build. Ever seen a grown man naked on the river? Yes, I have. Yes, I have one. I, it's a long story. We'll save that one for another day. Hey, Chris. Haley says, "Hey, hey, Haley." Rice Lake, Ontario, Canada. Whew. Yeah, it's too cold up there for me. Y'all can y'all can keep Kanukia. George is going to come to Tennessee with the boys. I am going to try. I'm doing everything I can to get up there. So hopefully we can go, go another fishing trip. Best kind of paint sealer for an aluminum boat. Um, Foster, are you talking about like a boat that already has paint on it? Or you got a raw aluminum boat that you want to start painting? Uh, answer down in the comment section and I'll get back to you on that one. I'll circle back around. Just say what the motor is. Don't be shy. We all know it's a 454 big block Chevy. When you're done, it's going on my burglar. <laughs> I wish I could afford a 454 right now. Um, actually, one of the motors that I have looked into, I don't have a boat project planned for it yet, but I do want to do an LS swap on a mud motor at some point. And it's something I have been doing a lot of research on. Um, I don't know that much about the LS platform. I'm more of a small block 350 Chevy guy. But when I started doing some research, I, the LS thing kept coming up and people were talking about the LS versus the, the 350. And I was like, okay, it seems like there's a lot of for the LS as there are, you know, for the 350. So I started doing some research on it and I was, you can actually budget build an LS and pump out some pretty good horsepower for pretty cheap. So that's going to come eventually. I don't know if it'll be next year, but I'm, I'm going to plan on it. Like, that's in the back of my head is to do an LS swap on a mud motor at some point. Like, it's coming. Creole Catfishing. What's up from Louisiana? Go Tigers, even though they suck this year. But that's okay. We're getting a new coach. 
we'll have another national championship in like I don't know two three years. That's how that's how LSU rolls. We you know we suck for a little bit. We get a new coach, win a national championship or two, and we suck again. And they trade us coaches. It's all good. We're not worried about it. We just you know what? It frees up all of my Saturdays for the rest of football season because I ain't got to watch LSU because I know they suck. <laughs> we got a bull though. We'll keep the bull too. What's up, Wilson? Oh, we got a yee yee down in the comment section. Good job. Ain't but a couple skips away. I got a backwater for sale. Thinking of going to a jet. What I'm very curious, Nathan, what is making you want to get rid of your backwater and go to a jet? Is it because you where you fish at, you don't really need a backwater or you started fishing somewhere different or hunting somewhere different where you don't need it? I, you're, you're the first person I have ever heard that wanted to get away from a backwater and go to a jet. So I'm curious to hear what your answer is on that. Cape Cod, Massachusetts. You made a wrong left turn somewhere. It's too cold up there. Y'all are crazy. Troy is my LSU man. Yes, he is. Any plans on completely removing the side pods from the small John boat and running a large rear pod only? Possibly. Right now, all right, so the way, I, the way I'm thinking about it, it, and I may be thinking about this completely wrong, but this is what I'm going with. Um, I've got half the pod already on there, the side pods. It's not going to hurt anything for me to extend them out and just see if it works. If it works, great. If it doesn't, I'm cutting the stupid things off and I'm going back to just the big pot on the back. In the in the grand scheme of things, the stability is nice, but it's not really going to matter. This boat is literally going to be a drag racing boat. I am going to stick it in the water, drive it in a straight line, and turn around and go put it back on the trailer. So if it winds up not being super stable, I'm just going to have to put my big girl panties on when I go out and ride that day. Uh, no one else will drive it though. Like every like since I put the 670 on there, everybody that's gone out there with me, except for uh, Chris from Freedom Lube, one time got in it and, and he didn't even go balls out on it. He just like kind of put it up the stream a little bit, put it up the river a little bit, which I was shocked that he did that. But you know, it's just everybody's scared to death of that thing. It is tiny and super unstable, and with that giant motor on the back, <laughs> it's just super sketchy, super sketchy. But so like I was saying, if if it doesn't work out, like if I extend the side pods up and they don't work out or they're just not worth it, I'm going to cut them off and go to just the big back pod and we're going to a whole new motor setup anyways, so it doesn't really matter. For a mud motor, I welded metal rod from Tractor Supply directly to a 5 horsepower Honda. For the outer tube, I used half-inch galvanized threaded pipe. She's real sketchy, but gets the job done. Dude, that is... I've seen so many homemade mud motors that actually turned out really good. And you got to think, like, if you haven't ever before been on YouTube and watched them build homemade mud motors over in Thailand, what we do here in the U.S. is nothing compared to them. Them dudes are over there smoking Marlboro Reds, welding in flip-flops and sunglasses, like freaking stick welding on the side of these boats and building them out of, like, one layer of fiberglass and a little bit of foam, like... They got some super rednecks over there. I don't know what they call them in Thailand, but they got some super rednecks. So the stuff that we build, and I see some pictures of it sometimes, like people send me from Facebook and Instagram, I'm like, holy crap. But it works. And then I go look at what they're doing over in Thailand, and I'm like, our stuff's actually kind of sophisticated compared to some of the crap they're doing over there. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's see here. All right, so just finished repainting it with Duralux, Duralux paint. Uh, you can do, all right, so if you've got a good base paint on there now and you're not worried about the durability of it, like it's not a crap paint. I don't know that much about Duralux, but it, as long as it's a halfway decent paint, if you want to paint another color over the top of it, all you need to do is get your Red Scott Sprite pad, scuff the crap out of it, and clean it really good, and then you can put whatever your next coat of paint on is. If you're worried about the paint that's on it, like it's already starting to show signs of wear and you haven't used it that much or it's starting to chip or starting to flake or you're just having any kind of adhesion issues with it, your best bet is to go pay four or five hundred bucks, whatever it costs, and get the whole thing sandblasted and start over. If you try to seal in bad paint that is your, that is your paint that's closest to your aluminum and it's having adhesion issues already, 
you will have nothing but adhesion issues later on down the road, no matter what you try to seal it with. It will never stay stuck down. Um, aluminum is already difficult to get paint to stick to as it is. If it's not prepped right, you're you're kind of just wasting your time. Your best, like, after all the crap that I went through on the 16-foot boat doing it myself and doing it by hand, I will never do that crap again. I will take it somewhere local and pay the four or 500 bucks and have it sandblasted and start from there. Uh, when painting aluminum, if you can get away with hand scuffing it, I mean, a bare aluminum, your best bet is to get it sandblasted though that's that's what i do in my hydro dipping and cerakote shop like anytime we do anything aluminum it automatically gets sandblasted no matter what so that's the that's the best thing to do glad to have you guys close by with a 350 in unless i have skills i'm going to need info to bounce off of yep i think that a jet an inboard jet with a with an ls would be super cool super cool so hey corinda glad you could stop by Come up in January and go ice fishing. The only ice that I do is the stuff that goes in my glass. I don't go outside when it's ice. Now, you also got to remember, like, I'm in Georgia, and my only experience with ice is the one time a year that it snows and then melts and then freezes that night and shuts the entire state down. So I don't like ice at all. We don't know how to drive as it is. We definitely don't know how to drive on ice, and I definitely don't want to go outside when there's ice, and I really don't want to go fishing when it's ice. I just want to stay somewhere warm. Y'all are nuts. I don't know how y'all deal with this winter time. I'm going to move to Ecuador or like really, really South Florida where it's warm all the time. All right, Kevin says. Oh, uh, hold on. Let me go back. I'm, I'm losing track of the chat. My son and I are still tossing ideas around until we can nail it down. Okay. Kevin, I didn't, I didn't hear your idea yet. I want to hear what your what your crazy idea is. And if if I missed it, I can't see it on the chat, so repost it. Ice fishing sucks. It's too cold. Water hurts when you fall in. I'm not going to miss it. Exactly. Thank you, John. I'm glad I'm not the only one. All right, got a big John boat, Triton 2072. Oh, baby, that's a big old boat. I would love to have one that big. 115 Four-stroke Mercury runs wide open throttle at 6,100 RPM. Soon upgrading prop from a 17 aluminum to a 17 stainless. You will love the stainless um, as long as you don't break it and have to replace it. But stainless is tough. And from what I have learned hanging out with all the Tiny Boat Nation dudes and the Tin Can Crew guys is with, with outboards, you get a lot more aluminum flex in the props than we do on the mud motor side because we just don't go that fast. Um so going to stainless really helps keep that that prop from flexing. It actually picks up a little bit of speed, but the stainless props are, God, they are strong. Like I had no idea that stainless steel was as strong as it is. Like I'm just so used to the aluminum props that we run, and they're cheap cast aluminum. If you look at them wrong, you can crack one in half. Um, but they're cheap. That's why I like them. I mean, I can buy ten of them, and it costs me like less than a hundred bucks. And you can't find a you know, a stainless prop for a mud motor less than a hundred bucks. So I can keep a bunch of them in a boat. If I bust one, I bust one. But where I'm at, so like in Louisiana, y'all got a lot of a lot of cypress stumps and a lot of down trees and stuff like that. We don't have that here. We've got down trees, but it's all along the sides of the river. The the middle section is wide open. It's just usually stupid shallow and either nothing but mud or nothing, you know, like a mucky sand. Or in the fall, it gets mucked up with leaves and, you know, the water will be three, four, five inches deep and you just can't get through there even with a jet drive because it sucks up all that crap because it's so shallow. Like when I was out running Sunday, I was on the Old Mogi River and 90% of the river was six inches or less of water. And it was just nothing but sand. It was crystal clear. I could see you know, right down to the bottom. And the few little parts that were deeper than six inches were like in the bends of the river where there's kind of an undercut on the bank. Everything else was, I mean, it was no water I was running in, but 
Yeah, you'll you you should like that that stainless prop and running at sixty one hundred RPM. Man, I wish I could get one of my mud rotors to run that fast. I could be some, doing some turning and burning. Nathan come from a long tail to the backwater. Uh, doesn't run as shallow. Most rivers around here are shallow and rocky. Needs a foot of water minimum. I did not know that about the backwater. Is it? Is it the is it the skeg? Is the skeg just like kind of hanging up on a on the rocks and on the really shallow bottoms? Is that why it needs that extra you know little bit of water to keep it moving? Because uh, I've always heard that they were great. You could just stick it down in the rocks and do whatever, and they they ran great. You gonna drive a pocket rocket next time you're in Georgia? Hell, you you got your own freaking pocket rocket. You got a twelve foot boat. Y'all put that six seventy on. Yeah, basically the same thing. It's just as sketchy. It ain't bad. Uh, now that I've gotten a little more used to it, it's uh, it's not as bad. It just it freaks me out when it's cold and we're out there testing it because like I do not want to take a dump in that water. If I get thrown in and it's cold, y'all gonna have to come like visit me in the hospital. Um, during the summertime, like if I get thrown out, I get thrown out. It ain't a big deal. But in the wintertime, uh, uh, I'll be dead. Have you picked Nate's brain about the side pods? Yes, I did pick Nate's brain about the side pods. He's the one that designed the stupid things. Um, in our heads, when I was up there in Illinois, like when we came up with it, it sounded like a great idea. But there was two things we didn't consider. One, we, we did not consider how much weight was going to go in this boat and really sink this bottom end down and how fast this boat was going to wind up going. I, I did not expect it to be slowed down by the angle of the pods and it's just something we didn't think about when we were putting it together but in my head i was thinking that oh yeah we're only going to be adding you know like 200 pounds to the back of the boat so i just need to give it some flotation but i need to make it wider so it's more stable so we came up with the design we were like okay cool let's just run with it i didn't think about me a gas tank a battery plus a giant motor and going with an even bigger motor and needing a lot more flotation so really we're just we're doing way too much on a 10-foot boat but i'm i, I like i want to do it i want to push the limits and see what it can do and what it can hold right now we're 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 right there we're at the ragged edge of what this boat can handle uh power wise and weight wise um the next thing i've got to do is if this works out and i want to continue running a long tail on it and i want to go to a bigger motor and a heavier motor I'm going to have to figure out how to get further forward in the boat to help balance out some of the weight because that's the problem. Even with me standing in the middle of the boat, it's too much weight from middle to back. I need to be like sitting up front and have a really long handle and run it that way to help balance out the front because when it gets going, like right as it's about to jump up on plane, it, it, it doesn't because the pods slow it down. But right as I'm about to jump up on plane, I mean the whole front end of that boat is just sticking up like this and there is nothing but water just pouring in over the back of it so it, it's it's got to the point where if i go any bigger which i'm going to um i'm gonna wind up swamping the boat at some point but i mean we, we gotta try it it's, it's for science but yeah nate did help we, we came up with the idea and now that we've tried it we know what not to do in the future for a low speed boat like um nate and anthony uh from brigade boats are the ones that originally came up with a float pod idea in the in the first place for the sides and they did it on anthony's boat but his is an electric boat so you know he's not going super super fast i think that when we tested that motor out it was doing like 10 or 12 miles an hour like that's nothing at on the, the 670 predator motor it's idling at 16 miles an hour and when i give it just a quarter throttle i'm getting like where it's wanting to start going up on plane and i'm at 22 23 miles an hour already but then that water hits the side of the pods and it just sinks the back end down. And when that back end sinks, it just, it stops all progress going forward. So we got to figure out how to get it up on plane. Once I can get it on plane, I think that thing's going to scoot. Troy said, oh, okay, LS motor, not LS. Okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah, I mean, we're we going to talk, Troy. We've got, we got to talk about some LS stuff. You and JDS Outdoors do a video together building a super jet mud hybrid. We talked about that already when uh, we, we talked about it before, but we talked about it again uh, when he came to visit me not too long ago. I would like to do 
something really stupid that nobody else has done. Like I would love to see like three or four jets in the back of a in the back of a John boat. I know it had to be massive. Um, or just just something crap. I don't know. I want to do something stupid. We're we're gonna work on it though. Now that he's coming to Florida, we're gonna be a lot closer, so we'll be able to collab some and do some stuff together. But um mud hybrid, keep that in mind. That that may be that that, that you may be onto something there. They can't surface drive like a tie. Really? I thought that the backwater ran pretty much the exact same way. It was just at a, at a different angle. Um, that's interesting. I did not know that. And I've never personally spent a lot of time driving a backwater. I've been on one boat that had a backwater, and I drove it for like two seconds, and that was it. And it was in open water, so it just it wasn't a really good you know, test drive of it. But it, 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 I really liked it. They're heavy duty though. That's my thing with them though. Is like the way that frame is built, like it is a monster frame. And it, apparently they got really good props because I never hear about anybody breaking stainless props on those things. So that's that's good to know though. I'll have to keep that in mind if I ever decide to go the American style long tail route that it needs a little bit more water than than the tie does. I had no, that's that's good information. Thank you, Nate I, or uh, Nathan. I did not know that. Anthony Jones is in the house. What's up, cousin? Yeah, Kevin, we got we like we like crazy stuff, Kevin. We, we want to hear about it. You can you can use us as a as a like kind of a dartboard. Just just throw it out there and 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 see what we come up with. We, you never know what kind of stupid stuff we might come up with. Glad we could help Creole catfishing. I hope that was uh, somewhat helpful. I don't know a ton about outboards. It's not really my thing. Um, but I, I tell you what little bit that I know, I know Nate's in here somewhere. He knows a lot more than I do. I know JDS does, you know, there's, there's quite a few guys. Um, and I see like a lot of people on the, the tiny boat nation Facebook group are real helpful with outboard questions. That's cause they're most of the folks on the, on the, on the tiny boat nation Facebook group are, are pretty into like bass boats and outboard motors. So they, they got a lot of experience over there. I, I just don't, I don't run them. I, I run mud motors. You should put a sound system in Project Bottomland Bato. Already did. Like, I'm telling you guys, like, I, I can't wait to get all the videos done for that boat because I've done so much to it since the last time you guys have seen it on a video. Um, I think the last time we did a video on it, like, actually doing something on the boat is, I think, the paint. I don't know if I've done anything since then, but, like, yeah, it's, it's decked out now. It's got hatches and... All the electrical's done. It's got turf in it. I mean, it looks, it looks good. Like I can't wait to finish that video. But it's got a sound system. It's, uh, it's not like everybody else's sound system. I did. I went a little different route, but I really like it. Zero degrees isn't bad. It's negative twenty. This sucks. N Nate, you're crazy. So when I was up in Illinois uh, last time with uh, Nate and Anthony, uh, Nate and all his boys were giving me hell the entire time because I, I just cannot stand the cold. Like it just got down in my bones and I felt like I was frozen the entire week. And then me and Anthony almost died on the way home driving across ice, which scared the hell out of both of us. And I, I like, I don't want to go back to Illinois in the, in the wintertime ever again. That was a really bad experience. Ooh, I didn't know it was 40 degrees AZ Longtails when you dunked in the water. I thought it was warm out. I didn't know it got cold in Arizona. I know it gets cold at night, but it, holy crap, I didn't know that. I'm glad you're alive. I would have died. <laughs> Nathan, did you get did you get smacked in the leg with your tiller handle on a on a backwater? I I have done that before. That's one of the reasons I don't sit down anymore. Um, when I run mud motors, I had one before and it was a little 13 horse and I used to run it with a straight handle on it and I would sit down and kind of rust it up like this. And I, I had a couple of incidents where it like kind of jerked me around and I hit my knee and stuff like that. It sucks. So now I just, I stand up. If it wants to jerk it out of my hands, it jerks it out of my hands and I, you know, I go in the water. Never broke anything except the boat. <laughs> yeah, you got. If you're gonna run a motor like that, you gotta have a boat that can put up with the abuse. If not, you're gonna be fixing a lot of holes in your boat.
Good fishing in January on a t-shirt. Yep, I'm going fishing in Florida when you move down there, bud. Because it's warm. And I like warm. And I'm going to take the 16-foot boat down there. I'll go down there and be with my, my mud people. Because there's a lot of mud people down there. My only experience with the mud motor is a pro drive. And I ended up burning three props in the sand. Yes, yeah, sand and mud motors don't go together very well. The, the props are... They get expensive quick if you're if you're on a, uh, a stainless prop. You just basically wear them the hell out in that sand. But that's, that's one of the one of the many reasons why I like the long tails, man. It's cheap aluminum props. You burn one up in the sand all you want to. Throw another one on. You out six bucks or ten bucks or whatever it is. The angle on the front of the pods back so it creates lift, forcing the pods up. Yep, that's exactly what I'm gonna do, um, John. John Reddick. I've got a couple of Johns in here tonight. Um, so my plan is, I don't know if you caught the first half, but I'll, I'll say it again for anybody that, that missed it at the beginning. But what I'm going to do is, so I went back and watched the video, and where I'm standing is just slightly past the halfway point of the boat. And that middle bench seat is basically the halfway point. Just ahead of that middle bench seat, the boat never touches the water there. So my plan is to start a little bit before where the boat never touches the water. Uh, say the boat's facing this way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to back cut it at an extreme angle, like a really, really steep angle, so that the water has some time as the boat's coming through to hit that angle and force underneath the pods and hopefully underneath the boat. And that'll give it enough lift in the back end to hopefully get it up on plane. And that's the problem is I can't get it up on plane to, to see what it'll do. Chris said, let's do this shit in six hours. We'll weld it together. That's exactly what we did. We, like, when I got up there, I was like, all right, so this is my idea. And then Nate threw some ideas out, right, or he threw some ideas out there. And I was like, all right, let's do it. Start cutting some stuff. And we just started cutting stuff and welding on the side of the boat. And then once we got done, we kind of stepped back and looked. And we're like, eh, that should work. It'll be fine. Screw it. And we came back to Georgia. And it, it, it does work. It just for what I'm trying to do, go really, really fast on a teeny tiny boat, it's it's not ideal. So definitely going to mod them before I cut them off. Move your battery all to the front if it make a big difference getting on plane in such a small boat. Yep, the, the battery and the gas tank and my paddle that I have to carry everywhere I go now because apparently every time I get in a boat, it's going to break down and I got to paddle back. But all that stuff is in the front of the boat and it's still too heavy in the back. Like what I think I'm going to need to do is cut out that middle bench seat and actually step forward a couple of steps and move that grab bar forward because um, it's just it's just way too back heavy way too back heavy it has i mean well the, the battery i've got weighs like 30 pounds if that and then i got that gas tank it's a six gallon gas tank so that what 40 50 pounds something like that it just it does not have enough weight up in the front and you also got to think i'm way over the weight capacity of this boat this boat's rated for 320 the motor's almost 300 i'm 240 and then all the other crap i got in the boat like i'm way way over it jennifer goldberg you are definitely in the wrong stream but interesting to know thank you <laughs> The sand is incredible how fast it eats props. Yes, it is. So, like, when I did my test, and I know mine wasn't, like, real sand, but I just got some play sand and did it in the backyard when I tested out all those that stainless prop. Uh, even the stainless prop, like, it ate the stainless prop up real fast. I was, I was shocked at how fast the sand eats them up. I had no idea. One foot if it's hard bottom. If it's mud, it's unstoppable. Yeah, okay, so that's what I've heard. I've never heard anything about hard bottom on the backwater. I've always heard that they did great in mud, like you just they like you said, unstoppable. How well does a mud motor work on sandy bottom rivers like the Platte? I don't know what the Platte is or the Platte or Platte or whatever. I don't know how to say that. I, I I went to government school, but so most of the rivers that I run here in Georgia are a mix of sand and mud. And we get a lot of wash down every time it rains. And then we wind up having big thick mud sections and we have big sandy sections. So I run mine in the sand all the time and I've never had an issue. 
and I wouldn't really even say this is an issue, but my one little con I will give you about running in sand is it does wear the props down pretty fast. Um, I can usually get, so like when I go out and I'm going to be fishing, I may run 15 to 20 miles round trip um, in the sand. And I can usually get three or four river trips out of one prop before I start seeing a decrease in speed. And it's just because the diameter of the prop is starting to come down. Um, but it's but they're so cheap. It just it doesn't matter. Slap a new prop on it, keep it moving. I wouldn't I wouldn't sweat putting a long tail or at least a, the cheaper style of long tails. I wouldn't sweat putting one of those in the sand any day of the week. Like that wouldn't bother me at all. Have you ever built a duck blind onto a boat? No, I have not. Um, I will at some point, but the the way that I duck hunt here in Georgia, we don't, or I don't use blinds. I like to do what they call float jumping. I run up the river as far as I want to go for the day, and then basically either paddle or use a trolling motor to float back down the river. And there, all the ducks will hide behind the lay down logs in the bends. So basically what you do is just get real quiet when you come up to the bends of the river. And then when you get close to them, they'll jump up, take off line, and you pop a couple get your ducks and then you just keep it on moving down the river and we do it like that um there's where i'm at local well i say within probably 50 miles there's not any place for me to go to get ducks that are migrating in i have to go either way up in north georgia way in south georgia or go to another state to do it everything around me is small creeks rivers and they just don't fly in like you you would see on a typical lake or something or in big backwaters where you would need a duck blind but i do want to build one uh for the channel because i know i get a lot of people asking about it like you're you're not the first person that's asked me about putting a duck blind on a boat and if you search on youtube there's like a lot of videos and people have done it um and what i kind of recommend because I've, I've watched some of them some of them are kind of janky and some of them are really inventive but they used really crappy materials or they, they kind of shortcut stuff Kind of take a little bit of what you like from each video that you see and, and make your own so that you can make one that will actually last more than a season. That's the one big thing I see is a lot of people will build them and you're like, okay, that looks great, but that ain't going to last a full duck season before it starts getting tore up. And you also got to think about trailering it back and forth. You want it to be not so much portable, but you want it to be easy to, to set up and take down and still be able to trailer it to wherever you're going, especially if you hunt out of state and you're going to be driving, you know, overnight or an entire day on the road at 70, you know, 75 miles an hour on the interstate. You want to make sure that nothing's going to come off of it or get damaged on your blind while you're in transport. So that's another thing to think of. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really about budget, how much money you want to spend and whose idea you want to use. Yep, AZ Long Tails, they're the same. They got sand and rocks in, in Arizona. They, they're So watching their videos, I've never personally been to Arizona, but watching their videos, I can tell you that their rivers that they run in look almost exactly like the rivers that I run in as far as the bottom goes. Now, they have a lot more vegetation, while we don't have any vegetation. Ours is mostly lay down trees and stumps, and uh, we get a little bit of grass here and there, but it's not a lot. Most of it's most of it's trees, lay down trees, and it's all on the sides of the river. And their rivers are a lot bigger than what we have here, at least local to me. So in central Georgia, most of the rivers are, I would say, maybe 20 foot wide, if that. Most of them get really, really skinny. And there's a lot of rocks and a lot of rapids, and it keeps boats from going as far up the river as, as you would want to. So like when I bass fish, personally, I do it in a kayak. Because we can get into parts of the river that nobody else can get to because of all the rocks. And uh, the boats can't get up that high. So I take my kayak out and I go fish for the stupid fish that ain't never seen a lure before. What's your opinion of the 420? All right. So my uh, my opinion is going to differ than a, a, a lot more than most other people's. And I'll explain why in a second. But if I was going to build a mud motor today and it was going to be my only mode of transportation on a boat, I would pick the 420 over any other motor out there. Couple of reasons why. It's got enough power to push everything up to a really light 16, maybe even 18 foot boat, even at 48 inches wide. My 1648, when it had was pretty bare, had nothing in it, with three people, I was able to pop 22 miles an hour. I was running 20 
pretty steady. And then if I really got concentrating on what I was doing, I could pull off 22. That is plenty enough to get you wherever you need to go. I also really like it because it doesn't require an external uh, fuel pump. You don't need a battery. You can pull start it. And they very, very rarely have any issues. I see more people have issues with the little bitty 212 than I do with the 420 or the 670. The 670 has more issues than any of the motors that I've seen in existence right now. Oh my God. Like I get on the, the 670 Predator Facebook groups. I see all the people that are having issues and I'm like, holy crap, what have I got myself into? And I've had quite a few issues with it. I've got them all worked out now, but it took me a lot of time and effort to get there. The 670 is a great motor once you get it running right, but so many people have problems with them from the factory. It's just easier to get the 420. I also like the fact that for not a whole lot of money, now I, I say not a whole lot, for less than probably six, $700, you can get that 13 horsepower Predator up into the 30 horsepower range very easily. It does not take a lot of money. The same thing with the 212. You can get the 212 up to, you know, 17, 18, 20 horsepower in some cases, but the problem with it is, is it's just never going to have the torque that the 420 does. And I think that's why a lot of people are starting to see that there's some value in that 301 motor because it has like, I think quite a bit more torque than the, than the 212 and it's not that much more expensive, but for, for 400 bucks, I think is what they go, the 420 is on regular price. I think when they go on sale, they're like 350-ish. I think that's what I got mine for. Um, they're, they're hard to beat. They're a really, really good motor. And I love having the gas tank on top. They're really fuel efficient. I rarely ever have any problems out of my 420s. And when I do, it's my own fault because I forgot to drain the carburetor after I got done running it. If you run regular pump gas on any of those Predator motors, the first thing you do when you get back from the lake, river, or whatever you did is drain the freaking carburetor and run it dry. Spray some WD-40 up inside of it so that it won't seize up. But th that's really the only problem you're ever going to have with that. And you may break a pull cord. Carry some extra freaking pull cord with you or some weed eater string or pine straw string or whatever so you can have something to start it with. Or if you want to get real fancy, buy you a battery and use the electric start. But you ain't going to have a whole lot of problems out of 420. That is a really, really good motor. I wish that Vegas Carts was still making the 460 like they used to because if I had a choice between that and the 420, I would choose the 460 because it's built based off of the 420. It's just a bigger bore and it's a stroked 420. So it's a 92 millimeter bore instead of a 90 millimeter bore. And it pumps out some really good horsepower. And you can trick one of those things out and get it running. I have seen some dyno sheets running 38, almost 40 horsepower on a 460. And if you want to go real stupid, you can run them on methanol and get way up there, like close to 50s on a 460. So you pull some pretty serious horsepower out of a single cylinder 460. But I, I like the 420. Like that is my favorite of all the, the mud motors that I've used and and, and that's what that's what I like. So that's my opinion. There's probably other people that got different opinions, um, but that's just mine. John Boat New from Denmark having a peak from Denmark. Really? That is cool. I didn't know I had anybody outside the U.S. watching. I'm glad you're here. That's really cool. Do y'all even have mud motors in Denmark? Like, is that a thing over there? I'm really curious. Let me know. I want I want to hear about it. Great power plant for the 14 foot. Yep. Y'all, uh, AZ Longtail's had really good luck with both the 301 and the 420. They, they, they've done really good on, on all their boats with it. So just finished a mod. So much learning from the Tiny Boat Nation crew, especially making the mistakes to figure out the solution afterwards, learning from y'all. Thanks to y'all. Very glad to help, Mark. I know I, I, <laughs> that's one thing you will, you will never not get from my channel if i screw something up or or if i do something that that i wish i would have done better i'm going to tell you about it as a matter of fact um i've got a video coming after we after we finish the five videos that i've got on on bottomland bateau i have got a video about all the stuff i screwed up on that boat i'm going to go through that entire build and tell you everything that i wish i could change and that i wish i would have done different the money that i spent that i shouldn't have spent and places where i should have spent money and I tried to save money. I'm going to go through all that in a video. Um, and and uh, all the rest of the guys are real honest. And they're going to tell you that stuff. Um, but just, you'll, you'll never have to worry about that from me. So when, when you're on my channel, 
if I do something stupid or I don't like it or I, if I should have done something different, I'll tell you that I should have done something different. I'm still going to try stupid stuff. And most of it I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to try it anyways. But it's great learning from your mistakes. And that's where I see, uh, and not just in the Jamba w world, but in all areas of YouTube, there's so many people that are out there that for the for the shot factor and the big production, but they never go back and tell you, I wish I would have done this different, or I wish I could change this. And that's one thing I'm doing different on my channel. Like I'm making it a point to every time I do a build or I do something, and I don't like it, or I need to change it, or I screwed something up, I'm going to show you that, hey, I screwed this up. Don't do this. Learn from my mistakes. And that's one of the things we're going through with the side pods on the 10-foot boat. I have no no problem admitting that we didn't know what the hell we were doing when we made them things, and they suck right now. But I'm going to try to make them better, and if they're better, great. If they don't, I'm going to do a video and tell you guys that they suck, and we're going to cut them off. End of story. So, But we're glad to have you, Mark. i uh, Appreciate all the kind words. That's very nice of you. Have you considered a small V-hole build? No, I have not, and I don't plan on it. Um, everywhere in central Georgia that I want to go, a V-hole probably wouldn't make it out of, out, of the, <laughs> out of the lake in most places. Most of the rivers that are here that I want to get into, most of the places that I want to fish and hunt are all less than a foot of water somewhere along the river line and a v-hole is just not going to make it if i lived closer to a big lake and i was going to run big water like to build a dedicated catfish rig i would probably go with a v-hole but the the other thing is here in georgia because everything's so shallow v-holes are not plentiful like you get on facebook marketplace here in georgia you ain't gonna find a v-hole and if you do it's because somebody bought it from another state brought it here and they realize they're gonna get stuck everywhere they go and everybody gets flat bottom so Flat bottoms like the thing around here, unless it's fiberglass bass boats or like your your big time aluminum bass boats, like the Aluma. I think it's called the Alum. What is it? The, the Tracker. I know that the big bass boat trackers they they do those in like mod V's and stuff. But no, I I don't have a reason to build a V hole. I would. I mean, I just don't have don't have it. Don't have a reason to. Literally drove 12 hours and immediately started building pods in Rude Day. Yeah, that's right. Anthony's right. We did. We drove all day. Well, he drove all day long. We got there, and, like, as soon as we walked in the door, we were like, hey, Nate. We shot a couple of little quick, you know, clips real quick, and then we immediately started building pods. And I think we were there till like, really, really late that night building those pods, and then we welded them the next day and finished up all the rest of it. So, yeah, we didn't, we didn't take much time to really think about what we were doing. We just We just said, let's send it. Move the motor inboard just a little. On what? On the 10 foot boat? Little Steven? Um, I wish I could, but the, the problem I'm having right now is the wake is so far behind the boat at 23, 24 miles an hour. When it starts going faster, I'm gonna need every bit of shaft length that I can get to reach out there as far in the water as I can because the closer that I get to that rough water right behind the boat, the worse those long tails run. Like they need to be in the crest of the wake or as close to it as possible. And every time I've taken it out and tried to do anything with it and I get it in that rough water, it don't matter how much I bend the skeg on it and how many times I've changed the props, it's always gonna wanna pop out because it has nothing to ride in. So I wish I could move it inboard a little bit, but I've got it as far back as it will go for right now. And a 670 on a 12 foot handles it with no pods. Yep. Have a 420 on a 1540. It seems proficient and I'm in muck and weeds. Yep. You keep them light, you know, like a 1540, a 1548, even a 1648 like mine. If you keep them halfway light, they'll run good with a 420. Um, mine, I will go ahead and tell you guys, lost seven, was it six? About six miles an hour going from being completely bare with a 420 on it to now being decked out and all the stuff that I put in it with a 420 on it. I lost a lot of speed, uh, but it still pushed it and it got through the sand and it got through the rocks. No problem. It's still got enough, you know, it's got enough ass to push it through whatever you need to push it through. Just when you weigh them boats down, that's when the long tails really start suffering and you, you lose a lot of speed crash into the cane and reeds and create my own duck blind. That's the way to do it. 
Say we build a polling tower but up in the front, then fab a swing arm that extends off the front of the boat just a few feet, and install rock climbing harness where you get off the front. <laughs> I'm just going to duct tape you to the front, Anthony. I don't know. I have to get somebody bigger than you. You're like a toothpick. You don't weigh nothing. Here's a long test. That's hilarious. We kind of do that in one. Yeah. Similar to the guy in Mad Max. <laughs> Science says it works, cuz. <laughs> What's up, Brody? I was actually just talking about you a little while ago. Cheap props. I'm from Europe and can't even get props, so I learned to make them myself. Really? That is cool. Um, Alan, tell us how you make them. I'm really curious to, to hear about it, so leave a, leave a comment down below. That's pretty cool. And I wonder if... I don't know how how shipping and stuff works, but I wonder if you can order them from Thailand or from a Chinese supplier or something over in the UK. I don't know how that works. I don't know if y'all buy everything from China like we do, but I wonder if you could get them over there because I think that's where they come from here, from Thailand and from China. What do you think the perfect size John boat is for a mud motor? Either a 1648 or 1448 is my ideal size not so much just because of the mud motor but it's stable they float well they draft in very little water they seem to handle rocks and stuff pretty well and you can fit two or three people in them and move around comfortably and not have to worry about falling off the side of the boat and a 420 or a 670 will push either one so you can get into a mud motor and a 1648 or a 1448 relatively cheaper now, the skinnier you go on your boat, of course, you're going to lose some side-to-side -side stability, but you will pick up some speed with a mud motor, or at least a long-tail mud motor. I don't know so much about the backwater styles. Um, on a short tail, it really doesn't matter as much, but on the long tails, width really matters. When you go over 48 inches, you really start running into issues with having to run the prop in dirty water. You want the prop to ride right where that crest of that wake is for the best speed. Um, so after 48 inches wide on the bottom, you start running into some issues with that. So if you can stick with like a 42, 46, or 48, you'll be really, really happy. If you can find an 1848, I haven't seen one in a long time, but that would also be a great boat. I would highly recommend at least a 670 on it, but it would run great. 420 fan too. Yep, I like the 420. 301s, yep, people like the 301. Had the Vegas cart 460, but he blows head gaskets all the time. Yeah, those things build up some insane crankcase pressure. Uh, you really got to vent them really, really well. But the 460 is a bad motor, though. Really bad motor. I like those things. I think I will actually spend money on the Stage 2 for the 420 now. Yeah, that's what I'm actually working on now. For I've got three 420s right now because um, I bought all three of them to do the mud motor review because I didn't want to swap motors out. But I also have some plans to, to do some other boat builds with these 420s. Um, you can get a flywheel, a billet flywheel for I think like 250 and keep your electric start. You can get a uh, the Arc Piston, or no, it's not, not the Piston, the Arc Connecting Rod. With the bearings, it's like 150 bucks, so you're 400 there. Gets you some really heavy-duty springs, a decent carb, and I'm hearing a lot of good stuff about the Chinese carbs that are knockoff of the Makuni, like the uh, the TM34 and the VM34. Um, you can get one of those for 50, 60 bucks, and probably cheaper than that. Uh, do you do your own porting work on your head, and and you'll be really good to go. I mean, you ain't going to spend it over about 6,000 RPMs anyways, but just for the safety factor, spend that extra 400 bucks and get the billet flywheel and the billet connecting rod so that if something something does happen and you do wind up spending it seven, eight, nine thousand 9,000 RPMs, at least you ain't got to worry about those parts slinging out and cutting your face off or something. But for the money, it's a good motor. It's a real good motor. Spend the, spend the money on a Stage 2 kit. That's what I'm doing now. I'm actually building a... A stage three, maybe stage four, depending on how it goes. But I'm I'm doing a, a 420 build now. I wouldn't go to Illinois for a lot more reasons than the cold. It's too dang cold up there. Y'all are crazy. Yeah, the 440 Duramax. I keep forgetting about Duramax. See, when I wanted to get the uh, the 420s. I looked at the Duramax, but they were out of stock everywhere that I went to try to buy one online. And the only thing I could find local was the 420s. Like, I couldn't even find a GX390 anywhere, even though those are way more expensive. 
Um, and I also would like to look into the new power. I think it's called the Power Match or the Powerhouse or something that uh, Northern Tool is selling. So it looks like another clone engine. I'd like to see how those work out. Oh, Ian, he just, uh, he beat me to it. He's actually running one. Tell me how you like it so far. I've, from what I've seen and what little bit I've read on them, or I think it's called the Iron Horse or Iron Power. Correct me for whatever down in the comment section. Tell me what it is. But it uh, apparently that one is a pretty decent motor, and it looks like a direct copy of the GX390, but in a 420 size. So it's 90 millimeter bore. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Trying to get caught back up. Thoughts on the Twister Mud Skipper Mud Motor? Um, I haven't personally used one. I don't really have an opinion on them. I've heard just as many bad things as I've heard good things about them. It's kind of a 50-50 split. It, I think that the, the issue with them is, is that people get them and assume that they're just going to run right out of the box and they don't spend the time and effort to try to get them dialed in so that they will run right. They get frustrated and then they leave bad reviews or they say bad crap about them on online. It's the same thing with, with all mud motors, the cheapo mud motors. People don't spend the time to dial them in. They take some time. I mean, they're, they're cheap for a reason because you got to dial them in yourself. It's not like, you know, buying a, you know, backwater or a gator tail or whatever and throw it on the back of the boat and do the boot scoot and boogie. You got to spend the time and get them running right. So... I, I wouldn't mind trying one. I'm not going to go out and buy one. I don't have a reason to. Um, I've got all the long tails that I need, and I'm going to build my own surface drive um, unless the channel just blows up and somebody wants to give me a, a nicer surface drive. I'll, I'll use it, but I just I don't have a, a, a need for the Twister. Um, I know AZ Longtails runs one. You might want to ask them, and I know they've done some videos about it. You can go check their channel out. Um Trying to think of where else I've seen. There's a lot of reviews on it on on YouTube. There's a lot of people that run them, but I just I don't have an opinion one way or another because I haven't done it yet. Maybe one day I will. The wave crest is why the long tail runs shallower than the backwater. They run in the flat water before the wake. Yep, that is very true. I got a another video coming at some point. I just haven't had time to to go out and test it yet. But I bought one of the cavitation plates. For like an American style long tail, that I think it's a, I think it's a Mud Skipper brand. So I bought one to see if maybe I can figure out how to use it in one of my boat builds. So I think maybe the ten foot boat is going to work out for that. Um, I did bolt it on the other day when we went out to test the ten foot boat the last time, and I could not get it to run right. So I need more time to play around with it. And we were cutting it close that day because there was a bad storm coming in. So I had to get some filming done. So I just yanked it off real quick. But when I actually have a full day to go out there and mess with it, I do want to revisit the cavitation plate on a tie style. I know that it is not necessary and you don't need it and you're not supposed to need it, but they're selling it and I want to try it and just see if it makes any difference. But from what I understand, is if you're running in the wake or the crest of the wake like you're supposed to on a tie style, you should never need a cavitation plate. And I never have until recently when I started with a 10-foot boat. Now it's outrunning the wake. The America style long tails need the cavitation plate because they're running in that, you know, kind of rough water behind the boat and not in the crest of the wake. So I do that's something I want to experiment and find out for myself and not just go based off of what I hear on the internet. I really like doing that, taking stuff that I hear from the internet and going and testing it out and see if it actually works or not. My boat only planes out with another person up front, but it won't with me, with just me. Any tips? On a, on a, I know for a fact on a flat bottom John boat, any mud motor that you put on there, after you get the prop dialed in and you get the motor running right where you want it and you get everything straightened out, your next thing is going to be adjusting your weight i'm actually going to do a video on this but so like when we were running my 16 foot boat in south carolina i had three people in the boat and we spent a good bit of time when we were going up the river trying to decide where everybody needed to sit at to get the best speeds when you're running by yourself you've got to make sure that most of your weight is in the front half of the boat as far forward as you can possibly get it so if you're running a trolling motor and you got a battery throw it all the way in the front of the boat if you can get it up there if you've got extra gear 
put it in a Rubbermaid tote or something and strap it down to the front of the boat. The gas tank needs to be all the way in the front of the boat. Everything that you can get in the front of the boat, especially on a smaller boat. So you're running like a 1436 or even a 1648 like I run, weight becomes more important to getting yourself up on plane or even getting any speed out of one of these long tails, the cheaper ones, because you've got to have the weight balanced exactly right or else it is not going to run right but usually nine times out of ten it needs more weight forward so that would be my best tip for you even if you got to go buy an extra battery just to add some weight do it and throw it up on the front of the boat it will help i actually did that on the 16 foot boat i don't need two batteries I'm actually running two batteries just to move some of the weight closer to the front of the boat throw a cooler or beer and ice up front there you go nathan you, you're on the right track Go buy it. That's, that is an excuse to buy you a bigger Yeti cooler so that you can have more ice, more beer, more weight to put on the front of the boat. There you go. So tell your old lady you need a bigger Yeti cooler for Christmas. That's coming up. I think my 29 by 12 Grumman is a bit too narrow. Yeah, 29 is really narrow, but... It will run really good with a long with a long tail because you can pick up a lot of speed being that skinny. And I know that from running the 10-foot boat versus some of the other 14 and 12-foot boats that I've run in the past. Having that, that skinny boat, big difference. When I start building a drag racing boat next year, it's going to be skinny like that. I'm probably no more than 32, 34 inches, something like that. I want it to be real skinny so I can get as much speed as possible. All right, here we go. Alan said, we have started using the mud motors and John boats in Denmark hunting and fishing. Denmark is made out of Iceland surrounded by brackish water from the Baltic Sea. Much of it's flat, sandy, and muddy. That is so cool. I did not know y'all were doing that over there. Hey, hold on, I'm, I'm skipping forward a little bit so I can read what he said. I got three props from the UK, then I started making them myself in stainless. I made the center nuts and TIG welded the blades on them, and they work better and cost around half. Alan, if you are not already on YouTube, you should definitely start a YouTube channel and show people how to do that because that is really, really cool and that's a really neat craft and there's a lot of people that are into do-it-yourself stuff even if they don't need to. Um, I still think that people would be really interested in seeing that. That's really cool. Most of it's flat, sandy, and muddy. So yeah, it's a great, great spot for mud motor. Now, Alan, are y'all building your own mud motors kind of based off of what you've seen in, you know, on the internet and on YouTube and stuff? Or are y'all able to get kits in from, from somewhere like uh, Thailand or China or something? All right, getting back to the chat. I run a 1436 Beaver Tail with a 420 Predator. Yep. Beaver Tail's good boats. I like those boats. They're just expensive. I'm always, I'm, I'm cheap. So I try to find whatever's cheap local and pick it up. That's how I got my 1648. I searched for 1648 for like... A year and a half before I finally bought the one I got, not only because the price was right. All right Nathan says, my first was a Mudskipper 420. Still have it cut in the mount apart and made it bolt on and pivot vertical instead of transmitting. Oh, gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, that's a that's a problem that some people have with these these off-the-shelf John boats. The the back transom angle is so steep, makes it really, really hard to get the uh the cheaper mud motor kits to run right on them. The better, the better thing to do is, is, like he said, modify the transom so you can get a section of it standing straight up and down. That way you can get that, that transom mount on there real good. Works out a lot better. Tried the cavitation plate on the tie long tail, but took it off. Just doesn't run right. Yeah, I, I had the same problem. I'm going to try again and see if I can figure out how to get it to run right and what situation it needs to run right. But, I mean, apparently they're a thing. They wouldn't be selling it if, if they didn't need it unless it's just a completely gimmick product. But, I mean, who knows? I don't, I don't, I, I don't trust nobody's opinion until I go really try it out for myself and, and put a lot of time and effort into really trying it to see if I can get it to work or not. Cavitation plate made it difficult to pull the prop out at speed. Yep, that is the exact same problem that I had. Um, I ran it on the 10-foot boat with the 670 Predator. And as soon as I left uh, idle speed, it I gave it some gas and it just buried the prop underneath the water and I was pushing on it as hard as I could and I could not get that cavitation plate up to the surface when I was going, you know, 18 to 20-ish miles an hour. Once I slowed back down to idle, I could 
pull it back up but then like as soon as that cavitation plate hit the water like it would hit the surface and then it would just dive down underneath so it's it's really finicky like you got to get it set just right but yeah trim tabs is the way to go i've got a couple of sets of those I had a turbo tornado kit with a cavitation plate it caught weeds and just cows all kind of issues now with straight tie uh, i see is way more potential yeah I've uh, and I've even run the uh, the Beaver Dam with on my last boat. I had a fourteen thirty six and I ran that uh, that big weed guard that they have. Man, that thing slowed the boat down so much and made it such a pain in the butt to run. As soon as I took that thing off, I was like, "Whoo, this thing is great." But yeah, anything that you put on the tie style long tails around the prop on top of the prop, except for those little bitty trim tabs, just makes it a pain in the butt to drive, like an absolute pain in the butt. But like mine now, even with the 670 on it, once you get it dialed in just right and you get a prop that it likes, man, I, you hold it with two fingers and just cruise all day long as long as you don't hit nothing with it. You hit something with it, it's going to want to pop around and then you got to get it back in the water and, and find its sweet spot again. Problem I found with both American and Thai with cavitation plates, you set them to run on the surface when on plane, but an off plane, the shaft angle changes and causes them to dive. So, there you go. That's, that's what happened to me then. The backwater plate is weedless. And I know that I did see on the Backwater website, you can actually buy their cavitation plate. So that might be something to check into later on down the road. I may revisit that one day. <laughs> when we're going to run our boats together, soon, very soon, on a day that it's warm. <laughs> like I wasn't planning on going out this past weekend to test the 16-foot the boat, but like it, it said it was going to get up to almost 70 degrees. And I was like, it's my only opportunity this week. I'm going to go hit it while I can. So we'll try to plan something soon. Um, I want to do in the springtime when it starts warming up, I want to do a get together. We were, me and Ryan talked about doing one uh, this fall, but we both got busy and we just, we just, we didn't have time, but kind of how they did up in South Carolina where everybody meets up and we go run the river, find a sandbar, you know, grill out, have a good time. I want to do that a couple times next year. So I'm going to plan one for the spring. Hopefully if the weather acts right, last spring didn't work out very good because it didn't get warm until freaking May. So we'll see. We'll see how this year goes, but I definitely want to do that. Well, I'll get with you, Brody. We're going, we'll, we'll run soon. I got, I'm probably going to be testing out the 16 foot boat with the new motor in the next month or so. So hit me up, message me and, and we'll, I'll try to keep you updated on what's going on. So you can be there with me when I do that. I think they sell the cavitation plate because people complain about the prop coming out of the water and hard handling. Yep. And, and most of that is really easily solvable with the, the long tails. If you can bend the skeg off to the side of whichever side is popping out and that solves the problem, Easy cheesy. It doesn't take but two seconds to figure that out. The other thing is I see people wanting to run way too big of a prop because they saw somebody on the, uh, on the internet do it and they want to run that size prop too. And you see a lot of people want to play whose wee wee is bigger than the other. So they want to run these big old massive props. And like I tell you, I got my best speed on my 16 foot boat the other day with a much smaller prop than everybody else is using. I was using a eight and a half inch prop on a 670 Predator that's modded out to 30 horsepower now. Most guys are running nine and a half, close to 10. And the lower in prop I went, the better speed I got. And a lot of people just like, I don't know what it is. I guess it's an ego thing or it's a dude thing. And they're like, I don't want to go down in prop size. But if, if you'll go down, a lot of times you'll find that not only will the boat be faster, but you'll also run better. Especially when you start putting more people in the boat and a big old Yeti cooler's full of beer and more batteries and you know you run a big boat fishing setup like i'm going to run on the 16 foot boat go down in prop size the more weight you put in that boat the smaller prop that you're going to be able to spin to get the same speed so that's the that's two things i tell everybody if you have a problem with your, with your motor and popping out bend the skeg and go down in prop size The Iron Tron, uh, yeah, the Iron Iron Tron, that's what it's called. The Iron Ton, something. 420 Honda clone is running great, upgraded to carbs three weeks ago. It has tons of potential. Which carb did you get, Ian? I'm, I'm real curious because I'm, I'm thinking about going on my 420 with the PWK or the Makuni knockoff from Amazon. And I, I'm probably going to buy it regardless, but I, I want to try it because it's cheap. 
But uh, I hadn't found a whole lot of really good information on the 420 versions of it. Most of the ones I see are for the the 212s, and they're running like the 24 millimeter and the 28 millimeter on the 212s. I want to run the 34. So I'm curious to which one you got and and how it's working for you so far. Uh, kind of northeast Alabama, a bunch of cool spots around here. Yeah, we're, I'm going to go out there. I also want to go down to South Georgia and run in the swamp a little bit. We just don't have a swamp around here to go run in. I, I really want to do that. Run an air-cooled air hats diesel, 22 horsepower, made a short tail with forward and reverse gearbox, copied the beaver tail mounting the mount. 20 miles an hour, pulls like mad. Dude, that's cool. I don't know what the, the diesel is, but... I know the guys over in Thailand run a lot of the three-cylinder Zuzu diesels, and they get serious power out of them. But uh, that's pretty cool. Copycatted the, the beaver tail. Nice, 21. That's really cool. If uh, Alan, if you ever get a chance, go over on my Instagram or Facebook page and shoot me a message. I would like to see uh, your setup and what you're doing, and I'll, I'll, I'll throw a picture up on uh, Instagram and Facebook for you, and maybe even one of the videos so people can see. I think that's really cool that y'all are doing that over in, in other countries. I, I had no idea that, aside from Thailand and all the crazy idiots out there that were running them, I, th I thought America was the only place that was really using them. Way up in Minnesota. Uh-uh. Y'all can have that. I want a small diesel long tail. Yeah. So when I was up in uh, Tennessee, we had somebody comment on one of the lives, and they were talking about doing a power stroke or something like that. I, I would love to do that. I'm going to have to have a big old boat, though. Those motors are stupid heavy. So eventually, we're going to work up to that. So I'm kind of going from lawnmowers to the next step, which is bigger than a lawnmower. And then I want to go into car engines and eventually diesel. So I'm just kind of working my way up. On a small diesel, how to set up the kill switch. Um, you just have to look at the wiring for that engine and find which one goes to the ignition coils and set up your kill switch to ground out the ignition coils or your uh, your ignition system altogether. Uh, I just I recently had to do that with the 670 and I filmed a video on it about how to rewire the 670 if you pull the oil sensor out because it's not as easy as it is on the 420. And the, uh, and the 212. Big props do surface drives better. Yes, I've heard quite a few people have talked about running bigger props on the surface drives, and they seem to work really, really well. Um, and one day, I will find out for myself, because I'm planning on doing that. I want to build a surface drive. Brody's been helping me out with that. Uh, the Makuni knockoff from Amazon. Uh, wide open bore. Uh, there's a lot of tuning, uh, but I'm on the right track. That's cool. Did um, Ian, did... When you took, have you taken it apart and looked at the jets yet and seen if they're close enough to the Makuni jets to where you could probably get away with ordering a, a set that's made for a Makuni or am I going to need to bust out the drill bits? Because I got, I've got a full set of drill bits for doing carb tuning, but on something like that, that I don't know a whole lot about, like my Makuni, I've got a real Makuni 34. Uh, I got a TM34 on the 670 Predator. I am not drilling the jets on it until I know exactly how it likes to run. And right now, I got it running pretty good. I did a little carb tuning on it the other day, and it's, it's just a few little, few little adjustments I had to make. But um, I'm glad to hear that that it's working good for you. Just needs need some tuning, so that makes me feel a little bit better about buying one. So I'm gonna, I'm definitely going going to do that one. Did, and also, Ian, did you get the the one that's like anodized red or black, or did you get the uh, I can't remember the, the the name brand of it. There was one that was it was marketed as a Makuni clone, and there was another one that was marketed as I think it was a PWK clone or a PKW clone or whatever it is. And the, the PKW one, they they had it in black and red anodized, and they had it in one other one. I'm curious which one you got. Thirty three degrees here now, y'all are insane. All right, the smaller prop puts you deeper into the motor's torque band the torque keeps you running strong when you get heavy yep very good point bob i did not that, that's a great way to explain it out that's my biggest problem with with doing videos and stuff is i don't always explain things really really well i explain it in a way that makes sense to me and it doesn't always make sense to everybody so i i, I try my best but i don't always do it no ignition on a diesel fuel pump shut off good point chuck did not think about that i forgot about that i know Nothing on a diesel. It's all done based on the compression. 
Cut the fuel to kill it. Yep, quite a few of y'all jumped on me. Jeff Klein, same thing. Hey, Jeff, I didn't even know you were in here. Does the diesel poop or fart? They don't do either. They roll coal, man. Hey, fellow, it's your boy Evan working on a Speedo post. <laughs> I'm glad you saw that, Evan. I, I was hoping you were going to respond back. But, hey, you should do a Fuman Boats calendar for 2022, and you pose in a leopard print Speedo on every single boat and let people pick which one they like the best. I think that would be awesome. And you tell your boss, Mr. Eric, to do what I told him to do, give you a camera and let you start doing y'all's YouTube channels because you're freaking hilarious. You'll be great at it. Yeah, the Chinese small diesels, um, I don't know anything about them. I'm not a big diesel guy. I know a ton of people that are into diesel, so I could find out if I needed to, but eventually i will do one but it's going to be a big diesel like i ain't doing no little teeny tiny diesel it's going to be a it's going to be a monster like i want to i want something stupid that's where we're headed we're headed like i'm getting all of the small stuff out of the way now while we're early in the channel so that when we continue on with these boat builds and things get bigger and they start getting more expensive they're going to get more stupid as we go so i mean i ain't ever seen nobody put a ls motor on a mud motor but it's going to happen. Try shooting something and send it to you. It could be real fun. Uh, please don't make fun of my terrible English. We ain't going to make fun of your English. Hell, half of us on uh, half of us down here can't even speak English properly. But yeah, send me some send me some pictures or whatever. Like Crazy Cook from the Muffet Show. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, send me some send me some pictures or, or video or whatever and I'd li I'd like to see it what you got going on up there, Alan. That's pretty cool. Not 100% sure yet. I'm still learning. I've uh, done small engine repair and tuning just a regular looks like stock until you look inside. Okay, cool. Cool. What's up, Jeff? Glad to have you. Glad to have you here. We had a I had a bunch of people message me on uh, the... Who was it? Earlier this week when I posted the video when I was out running the uh, the 670 Predator with your exhaust on it. And a bunch of people were like, man, that thing sounds like a Harley. It's awesome. Where'd you get it? And I'm like, I got a video all about it. Go check this guy out. So hopefully you'll get some, uh, some <laughs> exhaust orders coming in soon. How about the flat bottom diesel turd bird? I have so many questions. But that does sound like a really good boat project name. The diesel turd bird. I like it. A built 4BT would be a solid rig. I don't know what a 4BT is. I'm assuming that's some kind of diesel engine. Let me know. Because I feel retarded. <laughs> they shard. <laughs> the jets look like standard size. May order a Makuni jet to see if they fit. I'm a, I'm a diesel guy. I have three cylinder in. More just asking to be a Frankenstein into an 1860. Do it, man. Four cylinder Cummins. Man, a lot of people want it like Cummins and uh, and Power Strokes. Like y'all are really into the the diesel motor. I've n I've never owned a diesel truck before, but man, diesel guys like really really get into them. So I'd, I I'm gonna eventually visit that at some point. That's that's where we're headed. I, I got a car motor or two that I want to do first. Super common on smaller delivery trucks. Oh, is that like the Isuzu box truck motor? Because I've worked on a few of those in the past. Four XYL Cummins. It's a 400 pound motor. Good God, that's heavy. Well, I take that back. It's really not that heavy. You got a fully dressed small block 350 is five to 600 pounds. If you get an iron block version, I, I know the LS, if you get the aluminum block is like upwards of 400, 500 pounds. So it's really not that bad. We love the Muppets here in the States. Yes, we do. Similar. Okay. All right. Yeah, I know. I don't know a whole lot about that Isuzu box truck motor, but I used to work for a landscaping company way back in the day. And, and I used to, we have to change the oil and stuff and, and do our own basic maintenance on those uh, those little Isuzu trucks. That's what we ran. So I remember what they look like. It's just been so long since I've worked on one. I can't remember what in the hell it was called, but that's what they came in was those Isuzu box trucks and the, 
the landscape trucks. That's the, the motor that I, I remember working on. The LS engine would take a massive long tail frame. Actually, it's not as big as you would think. I have been studying, and I mean like taking notes, watching some of the videos of the guys from Thailand and how they're doing it, and it's it's not overly complicated. It's stout. It's a stout frame, but it's not a huge frame. Like you, it's it's basically just a bigger version of a backwater frame, but it's made out of whatever they can find. I mean, these guys ain't doing nothing special. Like if they got eighth inch two eighth inch two inch by two inch angle, that's what they're using. If they got rebar, that's what they're using. If they got you know square tube, that's what they're using. And they're they're stick welding all this stuff together in flip flops. So anything I do is going to be just as good as what they're doing over there. And I actually got a halfway decent welder and I know how to weld. So, I mean, it's, it doesn't look that, that terribly difficult. So I know it can be done and they're pushing. So like most of the boats over there that are running the big diesel motors and big V8 car motors, and even some that were running four cylinders, um, they're all pushing really big, heavy barge style boats that are really long and they don't look like they're over about five foot wide, maybe maybe five i say more along the lines of like four foot so like a 48 inch bottom but they're heavy old wooden boats and they're 20 plus feet long and they run these big old v8s on the back of them and they're i have studied the pictures to figure out how they did it and it it is not terribly difficult um then I'm, I'm gonna do it it's gonna be really cool Should have let you take the trimmer for a rip. You would have been in love with the diesel. No, do not let me drive your diesel truck because what's going to happen is I'm going to wind up wanting one and then I'm going to have to buy one and then I'm going to drive it and then I'm going to want to put a big old diesel in one of these boats. And then it's just, this is a this is already an expensive hobby. I don't need you making it more expensive, JDS. I tried to convince the owner of the backwater to build me a tie version with a uh, one-inch shaft. And no cavitation plate would be a sweet setup, but he said he wouldn't be able to handle it with 37 horsepower. I think he was just telling you he didn't want to do it. Um, I would slap a 40 horsepower EFI on the back of my any of the kits that I've got. I've got all three of the, the major cheapo kits. I would slap one on any of those kits right now and go run it. No problem. I don't think it I don't think it's too much problem. Well, I mean, you think about it. Okay, so like my 670 is somewhere in the 30 to 32, maybe 33 horsepower range as it is now, and I'm running it on a cheapo back or a, a cheapo mud motor kit. So I got a uh I got a beaver dam on it right now, and it's handling it just fine. What's another 8 horsepower going to do to it? Nothing. I I don't think he just I just don't think he wanted to do it. And I get why. They've got a good thing going. Their frame is awesome. Like, it's built like a freaking tank. I've never seen anybody have an issue with one. But I don't know. I just feel like the the cheapo mud motors, what I call them, the, the tie style motors, are highly underrated. I mean, I've tried to break the shafts. I, I filmed it. Y'all can go watch the video. I, I couldn't I couldn't break a shaft if I wanted to. I tried. And they're, they're stout. You know, I'm sure there's some people that have done some stupid crap with them. And I'm sure there's casting flaws and there's always going to be a lemon somewhere because they're made oh cheapo over in thailand so you're going to get some turds but the ones that i've got now i haven't had any issues with flat bottom diesel turd oh hold on i missed a couple how's the duck hunting where you're at what species are common so i can get into most of the species but the the ones i focus on are just the wood ducks because that's what's on the river and they're easy to get to and i ain't got to fight people trying to get in blinds and all that other stuff but uh we got a lot of wood ducks down here where i'm at you got to travel to a little bit to get to anything else flat bottom diesel turd bird can i use that at the moment i have a boat with a friend we call it beavis and butthead kind of old now yes you can use the, the diesel turd bird i think that's an awesome boat name And I'll go ahead and tell you guys uh, so that it's on record now. So if anybody steals my freaking boat project name for next year, uh, we're going to have problems. But um, I'm going to build a a drag racing boat that looks like a bass boat. And it's going to be called the Ditch Pickle Glitter Rocket. And it is going to be painted in solid glitter. So it's on record now. Don't anybody steal my steal my Ditch Pickle Glitter Rocket. A 
a lot of commercial mowing equipment and such. Oh, I know which engine you're talking about. They use that on the bigger real mowers, like the ride on real mowers. And somebody said, yep, yeah, I know, I know which diesel engine you're talking about now. Stick welding and flip flops is not recommended. Yes. God, that would suck. Hell, even flux core welding and flip flops would suck. I don't even like doing it in blue jeans much anymore. Every pair of blue jeans I get when I get to weld and I get holes in them from popping and stuff. I can't wait. Like, I cannot wait to get some time to go mess around with my new aluminum welder. Like, I'm really excited about it. I haven't. I've TIG welded aluminum in the past, but it has been a long time. So it's going to be a learning process for me. And I have very, very little experience spool gun welding aluminum. I know it's not difficult, and I know the basics of it, but it's just going to be one of those things where I need to get in there and spend some time doing it. But I got a brand, like, it's it's over here in the corner. I got a brand spanking new machine, and I have not used it yet. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. So I really enjoy welding. I wouldn't want to do it for a living, but as a hobby and doing little stuff on the boats, like, I enjoy it. I have fun welding. You've seen CB Media's uh, long tail videos. Yes, I have seen most all of his. That guy's voice is so freaking annoying, though. But he does get some footage of some really cool long tails. I can't wait to see that one that he's building now, that, that drag racing boat that he's building for him. Like, it seems like it's going to be a pretty cool boat. So, he hasn't posted a video in a couple weeks on it. So, I know the last, last video I saw of his, he was doing a... Uh, I think they were getting the motor ready. I think it was a four-cylinder something. But... I'm ready to see it. I think it's going to be cool. Dude's kai kits put a lot of horsepower in Thailand. No problem with the Rotax. Yep. And that's, I think that's the key like that I want to hit on. It's not so much going for motors that have high horsepower and high torque, but I also want to try out some of the motors like the Rotax that have really, really big potential to go to high RPM because that's where the, the long tails kind of fall off here because our RPM max on most of these lawnmower engines is 3,800 RPMs. You can put the zip tie on a governor and run one 4,000, maybe 4,200. Like I got a, I got one 420 out there with a zip tie and um, a little bit of carb work. I was able to get it to run 4,200 RPMs with the governor still intact. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you if you got an engine that can make power at six, seven, eight thousand RPMs, you're gonna go faster. So that's what that's what we're trying to find is I want to find the ideal motor that someone could go pull out of a junkyard from a car and put it in a modified long tail kit and run stupid fast speeds that's what i want to do i want to be able to do what they're doing in thailand but because i don't have a contact in thailand where i can just call up and go hey buddy how'd y'all do this i gotta kind of figure it out on my own and there's not anybody else here doing it so just kind of kind of in a world of my own right now sled motor with full power reversed yes i would have loved to have a reverse <laughs> less <laughs> last weekend i needed it a couple times but I just kept it moving keep plowing through jeff Klein's put 43 horsepower through a beaver dam kit see exactly what i'm talking about you the tie kits are way underrated like you could put some serious power to them and not have any issues 300 horsepower long tails running around uh but that revo bearing and mounting system would make the best long yep that would be pretty cool Four hundred and eighty horsepower and eleven hundred foot pounds of torque stock. Holy crap! You need to drive that truck, John, until the wheels fall off, and then rip the motor out of it and put it on a jet drive. That would be cool. In a boat, uh, that would be awesome. I welded my entire boat in Crocs. Jeff, you are my hero. I don't think I could do it. I would die. I have very sensitive skin, as you can tell, because I, I catch on fire real easy. What's your shotgun of choice? Uh, so for those of y'all who don't know, I work on guns for a living. Um, I used to really, really, really love guns, and I still do to some extent. Uh, but I work on so many duck hunting shotguns every year that I almost don't even want to go shoot that by the time duck season gets here. Um, I'm already like three months booked just on duck hunting shotguns. Like, it's been crazy. Uh, my favorite gun to shoot is the uh, Benelli Super Black Eagle 2 and the Super, Super Black Eagle 3. I would never purchase one because of how expensive they are. Um, I personally shoot a Winchester SX3 and a, a, a Mossberg 590A1. Um, I love my 590. It's a great shotgun. I know it's a pump, 
and it's more tactical, but it shoots great. And I've got a custom choke made for it that shoots a really nice, very nice group at 50 yards. So I don't complain. But my, my normal duck hunting gun is a, is a SX3. I really like it. But if I if I had unlimited budget, Benelli Super Black Eagle 3 all the way. Love that gun. I, I take them a lot of them apart. I work on a lot of them, Cerakote them all the time. Uh, the finish on them is not that great, but you put some Cerakote on it, you never have any problems with it. Love that gun, though. You're not going to want to spool weld anything aluminum under eighth inch thick. Yeah, but it can be done. I don't plan on doing a whole lot of like frame welding and stuff like that. But like one of my biggest things that I absolutely can't stand about my boat is I built that, that rear transom support bracket and my whole front bumper out of steel. And I don't so much care about the weight. I care about the fact that it gets destroyed pulling the long tail shaft in and out of the boat and hitting stuff at some point even the truck bed liner is is starting to come off like there's just no permanent coating for it and every time that i i scratch it or i get something on it that little spot is bare carbon steel so it instantly starts rusting within a day and it pisses me off and i gotta go out there and scrub it with a brush real quick and spray some more bed liner on it it's i just wish i would have done it with aluminum so that I could just go an entire season without having to feel like I need to go out there and save my boat from rusting. But that's one of the many things that I screwed up on my boat. It works. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just kind of OCD about the way my boat looks, and I wanted to, I wanted to stay looking nice. So if I could go back and do all that over again, I would build all of my transom support, my entire transom, and the uh, the front bumper. I would have built all of that out of the uh, aluminum and thick aluminum too, like. Probably eighth inch, more than eighth inch, probably three sixteenths plates. What I would have built it out of um, the framing and stuff, though. Like I don't, I may weld a frame together out of sixteenth at some point, and if I do, I'll get a dedicated TIG machine, which I want to do eventually, anyways. But eh, I, the rivets is easy. I don't mind riveting together. I did the entire sixteen foot boat for bragging rights with a hand riveter. I did not use a single power tool or air tool. When I riveted that boat together, I did the, you'll, you'll see it when I do the, the video coming up. I'm hoping by the end of this week. Spool gun does uh, 062, no problem. Yep. I've seen uh, Nate's guys up there. They run 050 with a spool gun. Uh, it ain't always pretty. And it's hard to weld that, that, that small or that thin of aluminum, but it can be done. It might take a lot of practice. I don't know if I'm that good, but I'm, oh, I'm going to give it a shot. Flip-flops are good for flip-flops and emergency boppers. <laughs> Got a contact in Thailand for you that might help. Message it to me, buddy. Have a Miller Pulse, no problem. If it's new aluminum, it's okay. But on old Johns, it's tough. Yeah, that's the, the kind of crappy thing about welding on old John boats is they get so gunked up with crap and you'll feel like you got a good weld going and all of a sudden it'll hit some impurity in the metal and just go like that. And then, oh, I know that sucks. So I will, I will probably keep most of my welding to either new boats or new aluminum and try not to weld to the boat if I can, if I can help it. But I do want to have that option, though. What, what, I do have that option. I got. I just bought the welder. I just got to get the, the tank for it. But I want to be able to weld aluminum as, as well as the steel and stuff that I can do now. But I'll get there. Just give me some time. I'm working on it. You peeled the transom open from the rocks. Did you go full send on the rocks and, and break your boat, Nathan? If so, I'm so proud of you. Old aluminum can even stick to t or can suck to TIG. Yeah, I, I I've heard a lot about old aluminum, but from what I understand, you know, I'm not a certified welder, but I do know enough about it to get myself in trouble. I I do understand that with the TIG, if you've got a machine that can pulse correctly, it's a little bit easier to get that cleaning action on a uh, on a TIG weld on older aluminum than it is on a spool gun so 
And I don't have the money to buy a, a big pulse spool, like a push pull like Nate's got. Nate, the one Nate's got is of that thing. I ain't got that kind of money, though. Beretta A300, Browning Synergy, Wicked Wing. <laughs> Speaking of the Wicked Wing, I do more Wicked Wing look-alike guns in my Hydra Dipping Shop than anything else I do. That gun, ever since that gun came out, everybody wants their gun to look like the Wicked Wing. And I get anything under the sun. I get all kinds of guns and they want them, they want them done like the Wicked Wing. So the Wicked, and it's not a bad gun. I just, I, I'm not paying for a freaking Browning and I'm not paying for a Benelli. I'm sorry. Um, if I'm going to do anything like that, I'm going to go buy a TriStar because the TriStar is such a close copy to the Benelli. Just, and it works. I've never had anybody complain about the TriStar. And I'm pretty sure they're made in the same place in Turkey that the Benelli's made. Yeah, building a cheap boat because you like good guns. I'm the opposite. I, I like cheap or I like expensive guns, but I'm not buying any. I've got a few that are expensive. I have most of my 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 full my full pews are kind of expensive, but my shotguns, my nah, I beat them up too much. I'm cheap. And then I like expensive boats too, so <laughs> or expensive motors on boats. Definitely better with a TIG. Yep. Anybody knows anything about um the new TIG machines that are out on the market right now. I'll probably wind up getting one before the end of next year. So when you hear me talking about it again, remind me to get with you so I can get a good recommendation. I think the last one I was looking at was the Prime Weld, I think it was. And it was like $1,500-ish and came with pretty much everything you need for to be pretty proficient with TIG Weld and Aluminum. So... Am I going to put a winch on bottom land? Probably not. I don't want to add too much more weight to it because I still have got to do the, the bow fishing rig for the front for all the lights, and I'm going to be running a generator. So, yeah, I don't I don't think I'm going to add a winch. Plus, I, most of the places that I go, there's a really not much chance that I'm going to get stuck. Um, most of the rivers that I want to bow fish and catfish in are at least deep enough for me to plow through um if i did get stuck it's not not anywhere that i couldn't get out and and pull myself out without a winch i think on the next boat that i do so I, I, this boat has kind of turned into more of a catfishing duck hunting and well more catfishing and boat fishing than anything that's what i'm primarily going to use it for but i think if i build another boat that's more for duck hunting i will probably put a winch on that one Tiny Boat Nation said it's not a good idea to rivet pods on your boat. Don't even get me started. Do not even get me started on that. <laughs> Just got a boat. It was kind of homemade. 1448, completely smooth bottom. Uh, 125 thick. A pretty thick boat. 16 inch transom, 20 inch size. Backwater was even hard to handle with a smooth bottom. Really? Y'all are the first, I've got two people in here that have now talked about backwater and the first two negative things I've ever heard about them other than they were expensive. Huh. Did not know that. How to find a cheap boat. I ain't gonna find one right now. Everything is expensive. The, uh, the market for boats is insane right now. I've seen some John boats that a year ago I wouldn't have paid 200 bucks for and I want $2,000. Like, Y'all have lost y'all's mind. I would just, and I've had a couple of people hit me up on Instagram recently, you know, asking for boat recommendations or what they should get and, you know, looking for a used boat. I'm like, dude, just wait, just wait. There's no reason to pay triple, quadruple more than what these old John boats are worth. Beer can, water well, awesome emergency rock accident patch. So uh, what was that thing I bought the other day? The, uh, the flex seal patch or flex seal tape. That's what I'm going to do. Benelli M2 all the way. Yep. Good gun. I like the I like the M2s. I have a story about TriStars. Is it a good story or a bad story? <laughs> I, all the ones that I've worked on for for duck hunters, they they very rarely had any issues. And most of the issues that I did fix could have been avoided with maintenance. The problem with duck hunters is most of them like they forget about duck hunting the entire year until right before duck hunting season starts, and then you've got 
usually like a, a late fall turkey season and then a deer season and then you, you're all into archery you're all into rifle for deer season and then duck hunting comes around and they're like oh wow i gotta go do this and they might put a little oil on their gun but then they go the entire season throwing this guns around in a muddy boat throwing them in a river when they get pissed off dragging them through the mud they just they abuse the hell out of them and never take care of them until the season's over with and they go to put, put them up and they usually don't clean them as good as they need to and they, most people don't want to take them apart or take them down to the parts that really need to be clean they just basically clean the outside surfaces and what little bit you can see on the inside and you don't maintain especially these really expensive shotguns they will mess up on you even the cheaper tristars even though it's a it's kind of a copycat but got to take care of them take care of them guns during duck season and duck hunters are terrible about it absolutely terrible <sighs> nate's is definitely nice with my miller matic 255 impressed mr summers hmm i didn't even get to see yours john when, when you had it on the trailer i meant to go look at it but i completely forgot about it we got so busy doing so much up there uh-oh frankie's here i'm glad you made it frankie it's about time. I've only been on here for two hours. I'm about to wrap this up shortly. I got I got work to do. Just bought a Predator 22 horsepower with a mud skipper. Should be here Thursday. Yee yee. Thinking about layout options. Uh, needed to be duck fish. Probably documented on my channel. Do it, man. Do it. Absolutely do it. Um, there's not enough mud motor content out there. Uh, aside from people doing stupid stuff and wrecking their boats. But good documented builds where people have a goal they want to do this with their boat they're going to use whatever they want to use whether it be a short tail a long tail american style long tail and they go through the process of picking out the boat building the boat putting the motor on there getting the motors dialed in and getting it to work right for them and then sharing that experience there's just there's not enough as me and arizona long tails and um there, there was a few others but they're just they're sporadic and few and far between so there's just not a lot of us out there. So if you if you got time and effort and you, you want to document it, absolutely do it. I think it'd be great. I'll watch it. They must not know how to dial the backwater in. Yep, if you got backwater problems, talk to Mr. Jeff Kleins. He's a backwater expert. And I'm super, super jealous. Because I really, I really want a backwater one day. By smooth, I mean no ribs, just a sheet of aluminum, nothing to keep it straight, and wants to drift. Backwater is easy to handle with regular johns like my. Hmm. Okay. It's actually interesting you say that because I was actually thinking about building a, a flat bottom with no ribs, like a real mud boat. I didn't know they were that hard to keep straight in open water. Never really ran run. Uh, the, those boats that are like that are out of my price range, so I figured about building one one day. I had some chines help it keep track. Yep. Smash that like button, guys. Yeah, I don't. I don't know a whole lot about the lives and the like buttons, but I know from what little bit Mike has told me that you need to you get a lot of likes on your lives to do it. And and this is just this is the first time we've done one on the channel, so I'll probably do these more often. We really got a lot of people interested in it. I I accidentally got on one the other night without meaning to. I was actually trying to do one for my hydro dipping channel, and I was still logged into this channel, and I had a bunch of people like getting in the chat, and I was like, oh. <laughs> Oops, I had to log out and go to my hydro different channel, so I kind of messed up. All right, broken charging handles, failure to feed, all kind of fun stuff. Shoot clays competitively so our guns get clean. Yeah, but y'all, all right, so competition shooting with a TriStar is a lot different than duck hunting with a TriStar. You competition shooters use the hell out of those guns. Duck hunters uh, shoot at, what, 50, 50 shots a year, if that. Y'all go through that in, what, like two stages on, uh, on clays? So that's uh, a big difference. If I was clay shooting, I would not be shooting a TriStar. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, a big difference. Big difference. One twenty five angle works perfectly. Hmm, okay. All right, Jeff. Well, when I get ready to build my flat bottom with no chines, I'm gonna get your input on it. You're always great for information. You are just such a wealth of knowledge. I, I love you, Jeff. You're awesome. If I can find an old Bass Tracker Classic with a jump motor at a reasonable price, gonna get a Vanguard forty. Yeah. Those Bass Trackers are getting hard to find for a decent price. That's a problem. Is it? The, the boat market is insane right now, but 
Um, hope it, I hope it gets better because I, I got a couple more builds I want to do next year, and I need some I need some donor boats. So we'll get around to it. But I'm going to uh, wrap this up. I appreciate everybody that came by and, and and hung out tonight. I'll try to do this more often. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys liked, and didn't like. This is the first time we ever done this. I had really no clue what I'm doing. I just kind of you know Jesus take the wheel for tonight. But uh, I want to do this again. I plan on whenever I get my next motor built going and I have some time to like sit down and actually do some motor building stuff like assembling a motor or something like that or assembling a kit, I'll try to schedule it to where I can do it on a live and have somebody here to help me answer questions while I'm working. Um, so we'll, we'll try that. But y'all give me some suggestions. Let me know what you think. We'll do this more often if you think it's a uh, stupidly passed on a three pack deal. Oh my God, really? Three boats for 600 bucks. Yeah, you're an idiot. You should have bought it. I'd have bought it from you. But yeah, so y'all let me know what you think. And uh, I'll try to uh, try to take everybody's suggestions in and we'll see what we can do. I can't guarantee that I'll do this all the time, but maybe, you know, once or twice a month or something like that. It's not out of the question. And uh, everybody just keep, keep an eye on the channel. I got a lot of stuff coming, you know, just trying to trying to get these videos pumped out is, is takes a lot of time and my job takes a lot of time too. My other YouTube channel takes a lot of time. So I do what I can, but all right guys, well, uh, appreciate it again. Y'all take care, brush your hair. We'll see you on the next one.